Hey everyone, it is Tuesday right here on Digital Charcuterie, and that means it is Super Tuesday where I'm going to sit here, sometimes with guests, sometimes just me, and we're going to talk whatever we want to in the world of superhero movies because we get seven this year. Black Panther just dropped, and now we got six more coming out this year. So let's get Super Tuesday started! Hey everyone, I'm James Rizile, this is Digital Charcuterie. If you love movies, if you love superheroes, if you love Ninja Turtles, every Thursday we do a Ninja Turtle show here in Teenage Mutant Ninja. Thursdays, Fridays, it's casual Fridays. The show, the channel itself will be coming in to fruition starting March 1st. We're going to start really gearing everything up. We've got our Oscar show, our Oscar preview show coming up this Thursday, March 1st uh, in the PM. Friday, I'll be giving you my top 10 movies of the year. Casual Friday is coming. Don't know what we're going to talk about there. Obviously, Ninja Turtle Thursday, we got some cool things. But this is our new show. This is Super Tuesday, where we talk everything in the world of superhero movies on Tuesday. So every Tuesday, 5 p.m., the time might change. But right now, I guess we're still rolling out. So 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, on Digital Charcuterie, we will be bringing you Super Tuesday talking superhero. But this week's kind of cool because we got Aquaman, we got Batgirl, and we've got Iron Man. Two DCEU, one MCU, uh, big time. DCEU, not everyone's favorite. I've really enjoyed the DCEU, to be completely honest with you. Uh, I was not a huge fan of Suicide Squad. I felt that one dropped the ball a little bit, to be completely honest with you. The Joker was not my favorite. Wasn't a huge Jared Leto fan in that film personal opinion if you liked him that's totally fine i really liked will smith i thought will smith was great uh harley quinn margot robbie was fantastic uh there was some parts i really liked some things that i was not too thrilled on but to be honest with you i've only watched it the one time i will probably watch it again uh just to see where i stand on it batman v superman i enjoyed in the theater really loved the extended cut of that one man of steel is one of my favorite superhero movies if not one of my favorite movies of all time gotta tell you guys that it was a movie I saw in the theater. Was not blown away by it. Was not blown away. I said, yeah, that was okay. Uh, and then it came out on, on DVD, Blu-ray, and, and digital copies. And, and I didn't get it. And um, for some reason, I wanted to watch it. So my wife bought it for me, and I watched it. And I became obsessed with it. And over time, and it took time, and I just kept watching and watching it. And I completely fell in love with that. So let's get right into Aquaman, which fits in with the DCEU. Justice League. I saw Justice League. I enjoyed Justice League. I... Look, first things first, gotta say, I did not spend a dime on getting to see it. I saw it for free. So maybe that helped out with my enjoyment because it wasn't like I shelved out 20 bucks, 10, 20, 25 bucks, whatever it was, to see uh, Justice League. I went in, my friend said, hey, I've got free tickets, let's go. And I saw it, I saw it like a week or two early. And, and I was just, you know, I was engaged from start to finish. There were things that obviously are terrible in that movie. But as a whole, as a superhero film as a whole, I wasn't, I didn't hate it. And... You know, the MCU comes and the MCU just drops hit after hit after hit. And we forget that we lived in a world where we would get Superman, Superman 2, and then garbage Superman, garbage Superman. And then we get Batman, and then Batman Returns, and then Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin. Like, and then, you know, superhero movies for a long time. You know, the Fantastic Four, the Roger Corman Fantastic Four, the new Fantastic Four, and then the newer Fantastic Four. Superhero movies, they're not... They're very hit and miss, and for a long time, they were mostly miss. And when I watched the Justice League, the Justice League, for me, it was so much better than the garbage superhero movies that we had in the past, and it kind of just had fun with everything, and I was on board with it. And like I said, I really like Henry Cavill as Superman. I don't think he's gotten a fair shot, but his look, his attitude, he he really embraces Superman, and I think if we, if we, if he was, if he were given... A proper Superman script, I think he could be uh, the ideal Superman actor to play Superman. I think he's fantastic. Uh, ben Affleck, I like Ben Affleck as Batman in Batman v uh, Superman. Well, he wasn't really my favorite in Justice League, and that's a weak point of Justice League for me, as I felt he was, over, he was doing too much with the like the Christian Bale esque performance. But Aquaman is a standout in the Justice League film for sure. People, I think, across the board were really happy with uh, Momoa's J- uh, Aquaman. J- Momoa's Jason. As Momoa's Aquaman. He was he was funny. Uh, he was serious. He was cool. He was hip. He was different. He wasn't the blonde, uh, you know, nerdy Aquaman who just swims around. He was kind of cool. He was a rock star. And, you know, you got uh, James Wan doing the Aquaman film. And I've got to say, Wan's directing, for me, this is, again, personal, his horror films... 
are excellent. And I'm not a horror movie. Like, horror movies scare the crap out of me. You know, when I watch a horror movie, his are his are my favorite. The Conjuring 1, I don't think I've ever been as scared in a, watching a movie ever. I actually gave my wife a bruise. I bru- I, 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 I did. Um, <laughs> I was scared. It really got me. Because he took elements and he said, you know what? You might not believe this, but it's real and it's scary and it's it's not all good. It's really scary and it, and it resonated. And, and when things resonate, that's when you can really excel horror. And he really understands that. Fast and the Furious 7, not my favorite. I didn't think he handled the action very well. Personally, I didn't. I was very let down by that movie. I thought he was trying too hard with the action because he's a horror movie guy. That, and the thing with horror movies, and I don't want to undermine them whatsoever because I because horror movies, it's very hard to make a horror. I would say... You know, making a drama is probably the easiest. Let's be honest. Like, comedy is difficult. Horror is difficult. Action's one thing. And to, to make suspense and whatnot, it's very difficult. He excels at that. But the action, I thought he was trying too hard. Um, and that's where I thought he kind of dropped the ball a little bit there. So now he's got Aquaman. And, and my question going into Aquaman is, is he going to be doing the the action from Fast and Furious? Uh, I mean, look, there was a lot of setbacks in that movie, obviously. But I don't think that is what caused like there were scenes that weren't that weren't set back by it that I thought weren't handled the best. So what one are we going to get for this? And now word is coming out that people have seen an early early cut, unfinished CG. Uh so it's very fresh, very raw of of Aquaman and look early word is that it's good. And people are running with that. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Early word on Justice League was it was good. There were a lot of movies that like look the first cut people really liked it, and there's a lot of movies that people forget that when they have these early screenings people hate, and then they go back and they rework it, and they rework it. And and look, Aquaman is going to go through reshoots. We're going to start hearing about the reshoots soon. They're going to have to. There's pickup shots. It's not reshoots. They're not going to be like, well, mobile sucks in this one. That's not what's going to happen. It's going to be little things, maybe fixing a scene here or there, maybe something to tie it into the new DCU direction that they're going in because. This movie, this movie is in a weird position because of Justice League's uh, failure at the box office. I mean, it made money, but it didn't make what it should have. A hundred million dollar, ninety million dollar opening is pathetic for a superhero movie in this day and age. It's just absolutely pathetic, especially when you look at what Black Panther did. It's just pathetic. I would, you know, somebody dropped the ball on that, whether it's marketing, because Wonder Woman should have been a good lead in. They, I think, I personally think they should have waited until. This April, like it should be coming, like Justice League should be coming out in a couple of weeks, is how I feel about it. But I don't really know anything. I'm not in that business. I'm not a marketing guy. But that's where I am. So you have this Aquaman movie. Early word is that it's good. Again, I wouldn't hold. I, I you can't base that on anything. Okay, it's good. S- based on what did they watch the first of all? Was it the whole movie? Because we're hearing the CG wasn't done. And CG, if it's bad, look at Superman's mouth. If it's bad, it will take you out, and that gives you just something else to bash on. So I wouldn't really take that. Don't be too excited by the news of Aquaman being good right now. Let's wait till we see a trailer. Let's wait until we see a clip or two. Let's wait till the second one. Let's really see what we've got, what this movie looks like, until we determine whether or not it's going to be good. Because right now, a couple of people who have seen the movie like the movie, and that's great. A couple of people saw Batman v Superman, and they liked Batman v Superman. And what does that mean? You know, a couple of people saw Battlefield Earth. They saw like Battlefield Earth. What does that mean? Who saw the movie? What opinion matters? I wouldn't really worry about Aquaman right now. You gotta trust James Wan. You can't trust DC, but you trust James Wan. You trust Momoa. You trust the process. And until that trailer comes out, I wouldn't think about it. Don't think if it's going to be good or bad. Because Wonder Woman, look, Wonder Woman, you trust the process. And the process worked. The process worked for Wonder Woman. We got a success. Justice League did not. The the movie itself didn't trust the process. You had Zack Snyder, and then he's fired. And Whedon comes in, and he goes. And and then you have this hodgepodge of, like, blah. Everything's going off on the wall. And it's like, this part's funny. Should it be funny? I don't know. No black suit Superman and blah. And then everything's kind of off the map. And... People are ready to hate Justice League. People are ready to hate the DCEU as it is. Don't give them a reason. I think, so So obviously good word of mouth for Aquaman right now is the best thing they can have for it. But I would say, trust process, wait for a trailer. Let's see what's up. Let's go on to Batgirl. Let's go on to Joss Whedon and Batgirl. 
So Joss Whedon stepped down from this Batgirl film. What's the deal with that? Great question. I have no idea. I was on vacation when this news dropped. I don't really, you know, so I didn't know that it was even a thing. First of all, this Batgirl movie was weird to begin with. They've announced Joss Whedon doing Batgirl. And at first I said, well, that makes sense because Joss, Joss Whedon uh, loves, you know, writing and directing the strong female characters. That's what he does. You know, he has got Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He wrote that Wonder Woman script years ago. This is his forte. Let's see what he's got. And they said that he had a story. Now he says he couldn't come up with a story. So when they hired him on, was he hired on from a story? Or was he hired on uh, because he had an idea? Or was he hired on because he's Joss Whedon and they wanted Joss Whedon in the DCEU? And Batgirl, like I just said, fit his resume. Like his resume works for Batgirl. Could have been any of those things. Who knows? Batgirl seems like a really weird uh, film, standalone film for me at this point. We don't have a Robin. We bar- we don't even have a Batman standalone yet. She hasn't been explored in any of the other movies, which is fine. You can just throw her in. But what's the time frame there? Who is Batgirl going to be? And why do I want to watch a Batgirl movie? Like ba- I don't know. Batgirl, like Robin, you fit her in with Batman. You have Batman, Robin, Batgirl. Then Robin can leave become Nightwing. And then Batgirl can be Batgirl and and whatnot. But they're just this goes into the DCEU where they're just like, let's uh, we're going to make this movie and we're going to make that movie. And there's they have characters. They have great characters, but no foresight into what to do with these characters. And so they're just like, well, Joss Whedon is co- coming on board. I mean, maybe Joss Whedon was just hired to direct to fill to direct Snyder after Snyder was fired. So they're like, well, he's going to do Batgirl. But really, he was just there to write the what they consider the wrongs of Justice League because he did the Avengers and they DC at one point was like, we're going to be the darker, grittier movies. And then the audiences were obviously like, we don't want the darker, grittier, which I don't think is necessarily true. I think it's the direction of the darker and grittier. You can go darker and grittier and not, and still be enjoyable. And I think that's where they've really missed, missed, uh, missed out on what they're trying to accomplish there. So that's, I don't know. Batgirl is a weird situation for me. I don't, like, I don't, I don't not want a Batgirl movie. I will go see a Batgirl movie, but is there? What's the purpose of the Batgirl movie? Are you making a Batgirl movie just for the sake of making a Batgirl movie? Like that's how they used to make comic book movies before. And and I've said it before. I'm fine with standalone superhero movies. You give me those, I'm completely fine. I have no issue if it doesn't tie into this, this or that. But I I need a purpose for it. And if the purpose is just because you want to throw out. A Batgirl movie? I don't... Like, I, I, DC's mindset might have been Wonder Woman worked. Maybe female superheroes are all, all that work for us. Let's make more. And that's the wrong thing to do. Uh, you gotta make, you gotta have a purpose. Wonder Woman has a purpose. Does Batgirl have a purpose? Where does it fit in with the DCEU? Is the DCEU even a thing anymore? Where does it stand at the Flashpoint? Because that's kind of getting heat. For me, look, I'm down with Batgirl. But give me the purpose... And I, you know, put her into, have her Batman and you know what would kind of be cool? Matt Reeves does his trilogy of Batman movies, and then they hire this guy to make his Batman movies, and his Batman movies have Robin and Nightwing, and it's a separate thing. I don't know how you can convince audiences to understand that they're separate, but it could work, and you could do it cool. Because for me, superheroes, I don't know if I said this on a show or not, but they sh- I, I've always felt, you know, Batman and whatnot, they should be treated like James Bond. You know, because James Bond, there's 20, what, 5, 29, 300 James Bond movies, and he always changes. Every few years, like, ah, that one's out, let's get the new James Bond in. And no one sits there going, well, that, that's not James Bond. They might say, that's not as good as Sean Connery, that's not Pierce Brosnan, but nobody goes, well, that's not, that's not James Bond. And if they do, you're out, new one in, and you just continue it. And I think that's where superhero movies can really excel, is don't, like, Marvel's a different beast altogether, but DC maybe nothing's working. Let's just try that. Let's just tell a Batman movie, tell the next Batman movie. They kind of smally hint at each other, and maybe you have a Christopher Nolan trilogy in the middle there. That's fine. And then you have a Ben Affleck trilogy, and you have the next one, and they're all kind of together, but very, very separate. And that's all I can say. And Batgirl for me can work on that level as well. But anyway, that's how I feel about that. Uh, you know, the Batgirl thing, it just. 
And, and look, on all these like female writers now like want to put their hand on things, fantastic. Let them have a crack at it. If they are passionate about Batgirl, that is who should be having a chance at this. That is who should make this movie. Not make this movie because it'll make... Which is, look, movies are about making money. That's fine. But if somebody's passionate about it, give it to them. And if it fails, it fails. You've already failed. <laughs> Just keep failing. But at least have somebody who loves it fail. Like Zack Snyder, he loved those properties. And you might think he failed, and that's fine. But you gave him a chance. He loved what he was doing. It wasn't what you wanted. Fine. But give it to people with passion. Let the people who want to tell a Batgirl story tell a Batgirl story. Because I think, you know, Snyder aside, you can really get something good there. Something powerful and something meaningful. Like A superhero movie with, movie with meaning is better than a superhero movie for the sake of a superhero movie. Speaking of the sake of a superhero movie, 10 years of MCU has gone on. I can't believe it. I remember going to see Iron Man 1 in the theater. And I'm a huge John Favreau fan, fan. Swingers made fantastic films. If you have not seen Swingers, most of you have probably seen Swingers if you're, if you're into movies. But Made is a movie you've got to check out. Vince Vaughn, John Favreau, Puff Daddy, Screech. Amazing film. You've got to watch Made. One of my favorite movies of all time. And not quite up there with Swingers. Uh, but it's fantastic. John Favreau, I think that was his directorial debut was made. An excellent film. Anyway, so I went to go see Iron Man. Huge John Favreau fan. Robert Downey Jr. obviously can't not like Robert Downey Jr. Uh, Walk Like a Man. What's it called? Uh, Heart and Souls. One of my favorite movies of all time. If you haven't seen Heart and Souls of Robert Downey Jr., Charles Grodin, you got to check that one out. It's so good. Uh, Tom Sizemore's in his... There's a, the cast is phenomenal. The movie's... It's awesome. I absolutely... Love Souls. You gotta watch it. I was excited for Iron Man. Blew my mind, though. Did not... Like, the trailer... The first trailer was really good. I was shooting an independent film at the time, and my lead actor came to set that morning. He goes, Iron Man, did you see the trailer? And we were all, like, just mesmerized and blown away by this trailer for Iron Man. And now, Iron Man is gonna die. Maybe not. But I'm... I, look, I'm gonna think Iron Man's gonna die in Avengers. So, it looks like he's having a mechanical hand. Like, he's gonna lose an arm. One of his hands. And he's gonna have a mechanical one. It'll be part of his suit. Uh, really cool stuff. Like, the my one issue with the MCU is I've never felt the weight of the danger at, at bay for these characters. I've never felt like, well, what, what's the danger? I've never felt like it. And, and I don't say, like, oh, well, this character's gonna have to die in this movie, but I don't feel like anyone's gonna... Like, there's no consequence to anything that happens in any of these movies. Everyone has a problem with Man of Steel when Metropolis gets destroyed, but in Age of Ultron, an entire city gets lifted up and then crushed, and nobody anywhere says anything. There's no consequence in the MCU. That's my biggest... Like, you know, things happen, obviously, but it's not huge and it's never really played upon. And, you know, Civil War, they all hate each other, blah, blah. But that's my thing. So it'll be nice to see. I mean, you know, War Machine, obviously, he can't walk very well, but he can now. Um, it'll be nice to see some consequences. And if those consequences mean that Tony Stark has to bite the bullet, I am totally up for that. First, he's going to lose an arm. Uh, so, you know, if they're still doing the one and two type thing with these movies, I kill him off. And I think if you when you kill him off, Peter Parker needs Uncle Ben. There's no Uncle Ben. Fine. Who's his Uncle Ben? His Uncle Ben is clearly Tony Stark. Tony Stark is still the Uncle Ben. So when Tony Stark dies in one of these Avengers movies, that will pave the way for Peter Parker's Spider-Man to be Spider-Man proper. So, and, and the, the great thing with this is Tony Stark, you know, if you follow Iron Man at all, and I love the cartoon from the 90s, if you follow Iron Man at all, he's, Tony Stark is a nut job, more so, like, he's like Batman, but more nutty and more, like, fantastical, he, he puts his mind into things, I think he downloads his mind at one point, and I, you know, Iron Man, he has the iron suit, and who better to be Peter Parker's Jarvis than Tony Stark, and if Tony Stark was talking to him, that's a way to keep Robert Downey Jr. in the franchise, but still kind of be out of it, but be in it and satisfy fans and make sense to the story. And if you feel, the, and if Peter Parker could feel the weight of a death, it has to be Tony Stark because it's not going to be Aunt May. And it's not going to be any of his friends from school, I wouldn't think, because they're not, I mean, they're cool, but who cares? If it's Tony Stark, then he could take that as his life lesson going forward. And I think it makes complete sense for Tony Stark to die and if you're gonna end 10 years of star wars why not end or star wars this is my other show of, of mcu movies go back to the beginning it, when you follow trilogies right the third one always has to go back to the beginning and this is 10 years go back be like this is the guy that brought us here say la vie 
we have to move on. Thank you for your service. You're out of here. And you get, you know, but his, his, his death, his ending has to be meaningful and impactful to the future of the MCU. And the future of the MCU, you know, a Spider-Man is going to be a big part of that. The first Spider-Man Homecoming 2 or whatever it's going to be called is the first movie in Phase 4. So that is a great segue for it. You have Tony Stark die. Peter Parker now has to pick up the pieces and move on with his life, but learn from Tony Stark. And and this because he doesn't obviously listen to Tony Stark in Homecoming. There isn't the full respect there. But if Tony Stark were to pass away, then that'll change. And his mentality will change. And he'll say, oh, shit's getting real. Now what? And then he'll figure that out. And with great power comes great responsibility. And that's how you have your Uncle Ben moment without Uncle Ben. Because we've seen that happen on screen way too many times. And I'm totally fine with it not being there. Although I love Uncle Ben. Uh, would be nice to see him. I would like to hear you know, a little bit more about Uncle Ben maybe. But, or maybe he'll come into the picture later. Anyway, we'll, forget, <laughs> we'll see what happens. I love Spider-Man Homecoming. It might be in my top 10 of the year. You'll find out on Friday. Anyway, guys, this has been the inaugural episode of Super Tuesday. I hope you have fun. If there's any superhero movie news, superhero movies you would like to hear me talk about on Tuesday, let me know. Email at digitalcharcuterie at gmail.com. You can always tweet me at Petsa Fina, and I will uh, answer your tweets on air or on the internet right there. All right, guys, until next week, this has been Super Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching and joining me here at Digital Charcuterie.